Hi, welcome to Undead Yarn. My name is Heidi, and you can find me on Ravelry as Nitty Girl, and on YouTube as Nitty Girl and Undead Yarn, and you can find me on Twitter as Undead Yarn. And I think I said Instagram. Instagram, you can find me as Undead Yarn. And this is episode 102. How's everybody doing? It's been a while. Um, so today, because it is the beginning of September, I will be announcing two FO thread winners at the end of the podcast, as well as the winner of the YouTube subscriber skein of yarn from uh, Fishnets. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. This is my Tangerine Designs bag. And in it, I have something that I have been working on for a while, and I'm almost finished. I was hoping I'd finish it before I recorded, but I didn't. I will hopefully finish it today because there's not much left. Whoops. I dropped it. This is what's left of the ball of yarn. <laughs> and this is uh, Humility by Mel Gill. And it's an asymmetric, well, it's knit from side to side. It's an asymmetrical shawl. Here's the beginning. You can see I have my little stitch marker. I think I got that from Whimsy Stitches. He had a bunch of Texas stitch markers at um, Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Festival. And this is the way it looks. It's got garter along with some lace sections. It's not a hard pattern. I'm making it bigger than the designer did. She said she only used one skein of sport weight yarn. I'm using two. This is my new sport weight yarn. I have not named it yet. I will be discontinuing which. It is the same content as which. It's 75 uh, Superwash Merino 25 nylon, but it is a bigger skein of yarn. It is 328 yards. So by the time this is done, this will have be over 600 yards of a shawl. So. Here I am, and I'm almost done. I'm going to finish on a garter edge. When I'm done all the ridges, I think I will be ready to bind off. I have this amount of yarn. I've got 10 more rows. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it to 10 rows. I might make it to 5 more rows and then bind off. But we shall see. I don't want to be playing yarn chicken. I will do that too often, and I often end up losing. So I would like to not have to worry about that this time. So um, that is Humility, like I said, by Mel Gill, and I am almost finished with that. That's a sport weight yarn, and the color is Jaws 2. My next thing that I have not really done any work on, I think, since the last time I talked to you guys, but I will be doing work on it soon. I'm going to pick this back up as soon as I'm done with the Humility shawl. This, I started as a test knit. Um, I didn't finish it. She really just needed the yoke part done. This is the Sheer Fun Top by Megan Williams. And I am using Undead Yarn in the indestructible colorway. And I believe this is my spider base, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Um, oh, no, it's snagged. That's one thing that I do not like about stitch markers. Sometimes they snag. Um, so this is where I am, and no, that's not the color at all. The color is very gold. Interesting, the other color showed up right, but this is a lot more gold than it's showing in the picture. Um, it is gold with some flecks of brown and black, and then this is a colorway that, let's see if I have a white paper. I wanted to show you guys what it really looks like. Um, I don't know if you can even tell from here. But this is Tracy's Cake Ride, and I named it after Tracy of the, um, you know, you really can't tell very much. It does have a very slight um, green undertone. So I started with a green, and then it's got some flecks of other colors in there. So it's called Tracy's Cake Ride, and it's after a comment she made during one of her podcasts where she meant to say, it's not a cakewalk, and she said a cake ride instead. <laughs> and I don't know, it just struck me as really funny. And she said, okay, there you go, guys. Colorway name, Tracy's Cake Ride. 
And I don't know why I immediately thought of like a pale green, because I don't think I've ever had a cake with pale green, but I thought of a pale green with some other colors on it. And that's what this is. And this one I dyed in my, in a base I don't think I'm gonna carry because it has not been popular when I've carried it in the past. It's a silk and merino. There, you can kind of see the green tint. It's a superwash silk and, uh, not superwash silk, it's merino and silk, 50-50, and it's a fingering weight yarn. So this is, I'm gonna use this and this together. And I think the gold flex will really come out. It is showing kind of, um, let me move this a little bit back. There, now you can see it. See, it's a green, it's a light green. It's very pale green. And here's the gold. It's still not showing up quite as gold as it really is, but these two are gonna be together um, in the top. Those are gonna be my stripes. So that is my next thing to work on after I'm done with my shawl. And it's been a while since I've made a sweater. Um, so I'm looking forward to having a sweater that I can wear in my own yarn. It'll be kind of exciting. Okay, um, I have one FO. And you, some of y'all might have seen these. I posted these on Instagram, and I think I forgot to put them up on Ravelry. But this is uh, a DK white yarn. It's my ghost base, and this is a gradient that I have not yet named. Um, what I have started doing is I'm making DK gradients that are matchy-matchy. So it, you can get, like, two matching socks or two matching mitts, or you know what I thought of that I think would be fun? If you knit a lot for babies, you can make two matching little baby booties. You can make a bunch of them, because it's 246 yards of yarn, and it's um, merino nylon. And I think there's a lot of things you could do with that. I did, when I was focusing on DK weight, because we, you know, there's a lot of um, matching fingering weight skeins out there, but I know some people like to knit with sport or DK for socks instead and it's kind of fun to have something that goes a little bit faster so these are DK weight I do have the ability to make one more actually three more of these right now I do have it up as a pre-order in the shop and I don't have a name for these and you can tell they've got like a let me see if I can get up close and show y'all it's like a teal and a blue and gold and the ending is yellow and I don't know that it got all the way into the yellow I should have brought the skeins down I have a little bit I have enough I think to make something for my niece she loves yellow and gold and it goes from a gold into a yellow so I don't know what to name this y'all so I think I'm gonna run another contest now for the first contest I had a decent amount of entries thank you guys I'm glad you all entered but you forgot that you need to subscribe. The way to win my YouTube contest is you need to be a subscriber and I need to be able to see that you're a subscriber. And the reason I'm doing that is because when you have subscribers and people can see how many subscribers you have, it shows up more often on YouTube in people's feeds. Like say somebody's watching a knitting podcast and they wanna know other knitting podcasts to watch. It shows up in their feed if you have more subscribers. So that's why I just would like to get the word out that I have a podcast. I know a lot of people already know, but um, it's very helpful for us if you subscribe to our podcast because it helps YouTube, YouTube promotes the ones that have, have more subscribers. So that's why. But I would like to see if you make sure you click that subscribe button underneath. And if you have a name in mind for my yarn, it needs to be monster related or um, horror related, something like that. Um, I do have some cute little color names like Cookie Monster and things like that. So it can be a cute monster. It doesn't have to be like a scary monster. <laughs> so um, any ideas for this, let me know in the comments below and make sure you hit that subscri subscribe button because um, you need to be a subscriber in order to be eligible to win the prize. And the prize is going to be, y'all can pick whatever thing you would like from my shop that's not on pre-order right now. So these would not be available because they are a pre-order right now. But I do have lots of things in the shop still that are not on pre-order. And I do have some sock blanks in there as well. Um, anyway, 
name this colorway. <laughs> okay, let's move on. The FO thread winner. I keep forgetting to say the FO thread winner um, at the beginning of the podcast. And I would like to say that this time. It's Hooked for Life, and that is my friend Tania. Tania, let me know what $7 or less pattern you would like. And y'all, I didn't have anybody enter for August, although there were some new FO, FOs in uh, posted on Ravelry. So if you make a finished object in Undead Yarn, it pretty much needs to be 100% Undead Yarn. You can post it in my FO thread and each month I pull from the people who posted that month for a chance to win a $7 or less uh, pattern. And this is the first month in a while that I didn't have anybody in August. Nobody posted in the FO thread. But yeah, if you finish it, don't just post it on Ravelry. Go ahead and post it in the FO thread because you can be eligible to win. So that's this month, or July's FO thread winner is Hook for Life. Congratulations. Um, I don't have a lot to say for weeks in review. Um, it's been a while, so I kind of start to forget what I've done and what I have and haven't talked about. But I did go to Denver, and I went with my husband. And um, while I was there, I did do some yarny stuff. We did um, really fun things. We went to uh, a couple places to go hiking, and it was beautiful out there. One of them was called Red Rock. And then um, I also met up with Cindy, and she runs the um, – she has Cindy Hallam Retreats. She runs uh, the retreats for Ann Bud, and I think she's – doing, trying to start some other retreats as well. So you can check her out at Cindy Hallam, I think it's cindyhallamevents.com. And I met up with her. I uh, know her from Austin Knitting, the Austin Knitters. And uh, we met up and I met some of her friends that are from Denver. And then we went on a little small yarn crawl and I didn't bring the stuff down that I uh, bought. I'm going to try to scale back on the enabling section of my podcast because um, I don't think you'll need to see a whole bunch of different yarn all the time. So every once in a while, I'll probably show you whatever I'm working on. When I work on something new, I may name, you know, I'll let you know where I got it from if it's not my yarn. So we went to Fancy Tiger, which is very popular in Denver. It is known for not just for knitting, but also for sewing. And right next door, it said Fancy Tiger. I can't remember if it was clothing or something else. So I, su I suspect they're either putting up um, their own designs or they are selling things that they've made. So I'm not sure what that is all about. I should have checked it out, but I'm not really a big sewer, so I didn't go in. Of course I wear clothes. I guess we could have gone in, but we were on a yarn crawl. <laughs> and I did buy some hedgehog fibers while I was there. I bought some hedgehog fibers um, roving because I have not used that yet. I haven't used that fiber yet. I've only um, knit with some of the yarn. And then we also went to, I think it was called Lamb Shop Denver. And they had a lot of Noro books, so I got a Noro book there. And then we went to Colorful Yarns, and she has all the indie dyes. So I bought, I think, four skeins of yarn there, something like that. <laughs> that one was a hard one to walk out of because she had a lot of indies, and that's kind of my jam. So anyway, um, what else did I do? Oh. I went to a couple knitting meetups, so it's been nice to catch up with friends. And then um, I did go back to work. I think I was talking about that last time. I've been back for a while now, and that's probably why, kind of why I waited till September to get the podcast done because it's been busy. Um, and I also, my husband talked me into joining a gym. <laughs> uh, I told him I'm probably just going to be going to classes because I'm not really, I don't like those machines and I don't know. We'll see. I am trying to get back into yoga. I'm having trouble with my hips um, and I don't know if it's arthritis or bursitis, but I think it might be one of those. The My last massage, the lady was saying something about sciatica, but I don't have pain shooting down the backs of my legs. Um, so I don't really think that's it, but I guess next time I go to the doctor, I need to check. I did, like, I think a, a year or two ago, I had started having hip pain, but then when I changed um, my shoes, I started wearing comfortable shoes all the time. 
it went away, but now when I exercise, I usually walk for my exercise, so I'm probably gonna have to change that. Um, when I exercise a long time, they hurt, so I'm gonna probably have to change up my exercise. So I guess it's good we joined a gym, but <laughs> my favorite thing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I wanted to let y'all know that Four Hens Fiber will be at Fiber Fun in the Sip, which is in Vicksburg, Mississippi, and she will have my yarn there. So I am very looking forward to that, uh, to hearing how that goes. She's going to be carrying my yarn and several other Texas Indie Dyers yarns to shows now. 